In the previous video of this series, I talked about methods. A method is a behaviour or an operation. It's an action that can be carried out either to or by an object. For example, this was the save details method. It took the initials of the person and used them to generate a file name. You saw how a method can be implemented either as a procedure to simply carry out some actions or as a function so that it could also return a value to the caller, for example to indicate that it's been successful. In this video I'm going to talk about method overloading. Method overloading allows you to write several different versions of the same method but each with a different set of parameters. This makes the same method more flexible. I'm going to make another version of the save details method but this one will allow the person who's calling it to specify a full path and file name. So I'm simply going to copy this. I'll paste it directly underneath. And now I have two identical methods, both with the same name. Notice I'm getting a compiler error here. Public function save details as Boolean has multiple definitions with identical signatures. They're not different enough. As I said then, this version is going to allow you to specify a full path and file name. So let's add a parameter. Now that my second version has a parameter, notice that the compiler error has gone away. And now we'll modify it slightly to use this path and file name. I don't need any of this. In fact, I can just take that parameter and put it straight there. That's it two versions of the same method. Let's do a third one while we're here, just for good measure. I'm going to copy this version now, paste it directly underneath, and I'm going to add a second parameter, which is who it was saved by. No compiler errors, because we've got a different set of parameters. And this version will use the path and file name specified, and onto the end of that, will bolt an underscore and whatever else somebody wants to add on to the end of that file name. For example, their own initials. So there we go. Three versions of the same method, each expecting a different set of parameters. Let's give them a try. I'll build the solution. I've got my front end running in a separate instance of Visual Studio. So let's call the method. Now, take a look at this. We have a little drop-down here, one of three. These are the three overloads of the method. The first one doesn't expect any parameters and it returns a boolean. If I hit this little button, I can see two of three. This overload expects a path and file name and returns a boolean. And my third overload expects a path and file name and a saved by as string, which is bolted onto the end of the file name. Perhaps that could be the initials of the person who's calling the method. Let's give this one a try. That's the first parameter. And I'll just use my initials for the second parameter. Looks like it's worked. Let's have a quick check. And there's the new file. That's the file name I gave it, and it's bolted a little bit onto the end as well. So, to summarise, a method overload is a different version of the same method, but with a different set of parameters, or to use the correct terminology, with a different method signature. The method signature has to be unique for each overload, and in order for a method signature to be unique, it's the combination of the data types of the parameters that has to be unique. So for example, if I was to create another overload, I'm just going to copy that one, and I had different names for these parameters, but they're still both strings, you can see I'm getting an error message. This method has multiple definitions with identical method signatures. If one of these, on the other hand, was an integer instead of a string, for example, 
the warning about method signatures not being unique has gone away. So there we are. Method overloading. Different variations of the same method, but each with a different set of parameters.